All right, well, it's three o'clock, so I think we'll get started. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. It's good to have you with us. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jared Covilli. I'm the consultant over digital teaching and learning. And uh, I think the reason we're all together is several of us are going to end up in New Orleans next week, part of the ISTE conference. So we're excited that you're all able to join with us. Uh, just kind of curious, I'm going to switch to a gallery view. If either by, uh, if you want to turn your camera on and give us a thumbs up or put this into the chat, how many of you this will be your first time going to ISTE just by show of hands or by uh, putting something in the chat? So I'm kind of curious how many we've got here. I think we're going to have quite a few first timers with us. So, okay, starting to see a few of them coming in here. Oh, this is exciting. Most of you are going for the first time. Well, good. That's partially why we wanted to hold this uh, just kind of a brief little webinar. We're going to talk for maybe 20 minutes or maybe a half an hour just to give you a couple of tips and pointers about attending the ISTE conference. And since many of you, this is your first time going. Um, my first my first ISTE was in New Orleans. Um, back then, it was actually called the National Educators Com National Educator Computing Conference (NECC). Um, and I'm embarrassed to admit this, but it was long enough ago that it was actually before Hurricane Katrina. So I'm curious to see what uh, New Orleans looks like now after that. But um, we're going to just break this up into a couple little things. I'm going to share a screen with you here and we'll look at some slides just real quick as we kind of get into this. Um, but share a few ideas with you and then also have time for Q&A and a chance for you to share some of your thoughts or questions that you may have. So. Kind of the first thing that we are curious about from you all in the chat, will you just share with us what's one thing you're looking forward to at the ISTE conference? Um, I know you come from a lot of different backgrounds. We've got some high school teachers that are coming with us, as well as uh, a few elementary school teachers. So, what are you excited about this year for ISTE? If you'd share that in the chat with us, we get a little sense of some of what. What's taking you out there? So, and what some of the things you're hoping to, to see out there? Renee's looking for some new technology ideas, some innovative ways for coaching from Kira. That's cool. Finding resources for CPE, that's awesome. Uh, Colby, I, Colby's a first timer. I asked him if he wouldn't mind just turning on his, his mic and sharing with us a little of what he's looking forward to. If you don't know Colby Hawkins, he's one of the digital teaching and learning um, specialists. So Colby, what's one of the things that you're looking forward to this uh, upcoming conference? Um, so I really like the energy that you get when you, uh, a gather with people in like this ed tech community and you're either in sessions or you're just interacting with others and wherever it might be i just love that energy and just the new ideas the ways that you're seeing people use technology in effective ways in their classrooms yeah. oh, it's one of the great things about attending conferences the the energy that comes from being live now just so you know this conference has a kind of a hybrid version. So there'll be some sessions that are live and some that are virtual. Um, so your your registration will actually allow you to go to either, right? So um, while you're there in person, obviously we'd recommend you get the in-person sessions, but you can also catch up on some of the virtual sessions uh, kind of after the fact. Uh, you can just find a little nook where you want to um, maybe sit down at the, con the convention center there and Watch a session over the internet if you don't find anything live that you're looking for. So, there should be a lot of options for everybody. Uh, Colby mentions the, the energy of a live conference. I, I'll be curious to see how many people attend this ISTE, but traditionally, ISTE is around 15,000 conference attendees. So, it's a pretty big conference. You know, it's one of those conferences that uh, you can certainly get lost in and as you kind of get through and get going on that subject. Let's jump in and share a few of the tips and some ideas with you just as we kind of get going here. And feel free if you want to at any point to share something in the chat or 
to ask a question, turn on your microphone, go ahead and ask away. I, I figured we'd break this down into three parts and kind of look at um, attending this conference. So number one, we want to give you a few ideas for planning your conference. Um, two, we want to talk a little bit about some of the options that are out there for connecting with other educators. And then and finally, uh, you know, Glenn mentioned he's excited about New Orleans. I think a lot of you probably are. It's a fun place to visit and a lot of history there. So uh, here has actually put together some nice uh, information about some different places that you can go and experience in New Orleans. So we'll make sure we share that as well. Um, let's jump in now. So I put down a few bullet points. I'm just going to talk about these a little bit as far as planning your conference. And because ISTE is a technology conference, it really is kind of all over the board as far as the different types of sessions that you can go to and the different um, the different curriculum areas that are you know introduced and explored in this conference. I think the biggest thing that, as we talked about it as a team for some of us who've been before, is obviously, um, and my sound's a little difficult to hear. Let me see if I can get this thing over. Like one second, sorry. This is because I got a gravity voice. Sorry, I turned up my microphone a little bit more. Let me try it this way. Does that sound better? Can you hear me better with that? No? Okay. Oh, in and out mostly out. That's not good. So, well, hopefully, let me see one more thing. Try it in Zoom if I can change it. Give me just one second. I'm going to stop my screen sharing. Okay, hopefully that helps a little bit. I turned up my volume. Sorry about that. Just want to make sure you can all hear me. So, doing my best here. Okay, let's get back into it. Um, so, as I mentioned a second ago, as you look into writing down some of your specific learning goals, the SD conference has a lot of sessions at the same time. You'll typically find that any given hour that there are approximately 30 different places where you could go. Um, and that's just for full time sessions. There's also a, a lot of opportunity to network with people to visit the vendor hall, which usually takes up about two or three ballrooms of space, um, as well as just a lot of vendor sessions where you can go and participate in sessions that are not necessarily on the normal schedule, but just part of the conference as well. So having a goal in mind before you get there can really be helpful. I'm going to just open up quickly and show you the um, ISTE's website, just so you can kind of see as you look to plan out your schedule just a little bit. So if you haven't been to um, the ISTE conference website, here we go. It's conference.iste.org slash 2022 is the web URL. I'm going to put that in the chat just so that you, if you want to go there with me, you're more than welcome to. But just wanted to share with you how you navigate around it a little bit if you haven't had a chance to look at this yet. So in the chat there, you'll find the URL. And when I come in here, if I'm looking specifically at wanting to go through the schedule a little bit, I'm going to go to the attend option. And instead of clicking on this first one, program overview, you want to go down to the second link under program, which says, program search. So that's the one that will give you a chance to uh, kind of look through and set your filters and kind of favorite some of the sessions that you're looking to attend. Um, so let's just kind of do a quick review of what this, this uh, how you can kind of navigate through the program guide here. So you can see the conference basically has sessions and things going on. Um, some people are there as early as Saturday. I think probably most of our group will be arriving Saturday afternoon or Sunday, um, and that conference goes through Wednesday, but there may be a few kind of uh, last sessions on Thursday morning as well. But you can see, you can narrow it down by the day of the week that you're looking for. Um, 
Second thing that you can search for are the formats. So you can kind of see some of the different formatted sessions that they have. Um, I wanted to take just a second to talk about some of those just so you're aware of what we're kind of looking at. So the main stage would be kind of like a keynote session. So that might be a keynote or a featured speaker. Those are going to be primarily people who are in educational technology. Um, so they're people that you've probably seen before if you're on Stephen. Are you still having problems with my audio, you guys? Yeah. I'll, I'll switch over to him. Hi. Everybody's telling me they're not working. Okay. I just switched my MacBook um, audio there, so hopefully that'll be better. Great. Thanks for letting me know. Um, but main stage, that's primarily people who are going to be giving kind of uh, like keynote type presentations. An ed talk session, so as the second one down there, you'll find that those are kind of more geared like a TED talk. So they're shorter sessions uh, with several speakers. Not I shouldn't say shorter sessions, but the speaking time is sh shorter so that you'll have what they call in um, ISTE world, they have sessions called Ignite sessions where people get five minutes to talk and uh, they have a limited number of slides. So that's kind of an idea of like during that hour where you're together, you might actually have, you know, about eight different people presenting during a session like that, but for really short bits of time. Um, you've got uh, some different labs. So you've got a creation lab that's built to be a kind of a hands-on workshop style. And then you have something called a playground. A playground is usually um, a place where you can get hands-on but there's more of uh, like a robot lab feel or more of kind of like tools that you can just kind of explore a little bit um, poster sessions or if you've never been to a conference that has those before it really is kind of the science fair model where you just have uh, presenters who are there primarily to give a short presentation and to answer questions you'll find that several uh, several different time slots during the conference you can attend uh, poster sessions and then you can kind of see the rest of them as you go through, but um, there's just a lot of different options for you as far as types of sessions that you can attend. Um, one thing that we have as a little um, tip coming up in one of the next bullet points there is as you plan out your schedule, you'll probably find that some of the popular sessions will fill quickly. So if you're not able to get into your first choice, that sometimes those main stage or educational talk areas they're usually larger rooms that seat several hundred people. So that's always a good fallback as far as a place where you can go and hear somebody who is probably um, a pretty good presenter as far as like they they present on the national stage quite a bit. So if this is your first time going to ISTE, the, the main stage or the ed talks may be good places for you to go if you're interested in hearing from some of those kind of the leading voices in ed tech and some of those kind of folks. So like to share that with you just so you know. Um, but let's just show you how I'm going to search and kind of find something. So on Monday, let's say I want to go and look at Monday morning to see what sessions are available. And you can see as I kind of go through this session, it shows you some of the different symbols and some of the different options. So it will tell you whether it's live or whether it's just something you can do on a recording. And you can see if it's something that I'm interested in, I can just come over here and click the little favorite icon and this will start to build my schedule. Now as you build your schedule you can look at it here online but you can also download the ISTE conference app and then you can have it on your mobile device. Um, you do need just to log in with your login credential for the conference uh, but I found that to be a great way to get around and kind of find things. Um, one other thing that you should know is that you can obviously favorite multiple sessions for any given hour so you can have a backup plan for yourself as you kind of go through if the first session that you're interested in is full you can kind of um, see where the next session goes the only thing that is a little unfortunate about some of these larger venues that like the conference center in the convention center in new orleans is um, one session your first choice and your second choice might actually be you know a mile walk as you kind of work your way around the conference center so you, you, you need to just kind of map out a little bit as you kind of get familiar with um, with what that looks like. 
David's asking, what's the login credential for the conference? So um, if your school registered for you, I'm guessing it's just your email address. Um, and if, if you don't have a password, you can obviously click forgot password and set your own password for it. But that's just your general ISTE login. And the nice thing is, like I say, once you log in, it will keep track of all of your stuff for you. So hopefully that helps you to kind of set your agenda and kind of work through your schedule a little bit there. Uh, other questions about that? Like I say, you'll have basic conference sessions. That the conference basically runs from um, around 8 o'clock in the morning until last sessions are usually pretty late in the afternoon. I know they have some that go all the way up until about 6 p.m. And there's not really any large breaks where there aren't any sessions. There's always something available for you to go to. So you can pretty much plan out your days as much as you'd like. But keep in mind that, you know, for a break, you might choose to mix in a virtual session here and there just so that you're not kind of running yourself ragged a little bit. Let's go back to a couple of our other tips on this idea. So we talked about the backup plan just so that you're aware. Um, one thing that I would really emphasize here is the idea of taking care of yourself. I know this sounds funny, but um, they do not have a lunch break and you'll find often that you want to continue to go to the sessions all day long. And by early afternoon, you'll be wiped. I mean, you'll just not, uh, you'll kind of run yourself a little into the ground. So I'd say make sure that you plan out some time to take a break um, or plan to bring some snacks with you. There's, it's like any conference center, there's a lot of different places where they'll have food available for you, but the lines are pretty long. As you can imagine with so many people at the convention center that um, you just kind of need to map out your schedule a little bit that way. Another thing that sounds kind of intuitive, but you might forget, like um, the conference centers are cold for some and hot for others. So you always want to make sure if you're somebody that gets cold easily, it's an air conditioned building and it will be cold inside for some people. Um, and so you just kind of need to dress appropriately. The biggest thing that people forget sometimes when they go to an educational conference is to dress comfortably for yourself, right? Like make sure you wear good shoes. Like this is not a place for fashion as you're walking miles around this convention center. So I'd make sure you wear some comfortable shoes so that you're not wearing yourself out that way as well. Um, and then the last tip that we kind of put in here for planning your conference is plan for the expo hall. If you've never seen this expo hall before, it really is massive. I mean, they'll have several hundred vendors available to you. So it's again, it's a nice place to go sometimes if your first or second choice on your sessions just haven't panned out. But at the same time, if you show up in the expo hall and you don't really have a like a, a plan in mind for it, it's an easy place to kill two or three hours. Um, plus the fact that they give away a lot of swag at the conference so um, you might want to make sure you bring like a little bag or something to put your stuff in because uh, this the vendor hall can get very overwhelming very quickly but one hidden gem of the vendor hall or the expo hall that i really like is most of the major technology vendors so we're talking about like adobe and google and apple and microsoft they'll all have like their little um, staging areas where they'll do sessions just for those tools in their vendor area. So the only way to really get those schedules, unfortunately, is to go to the vendor hall or, you know, to kind of take a um, look through the program book to see if they've got some of that. But those are great sessions. And a lot of times they're geared for a smaller audience. So you can ask a lot of questions to experts for those various tools and get some pretty good hands on information there. So those are just a few of our tips about kind of planning out your conference and using some of the tools from ISTE. So again, don't forget to use their planning tool online or download the mobile app. I saw it's available for all platforms, um, but make sure you, that you favorite the, se the sessions that you want to go to because easy to keep track of them on those devices. Um, anybody have questions either in the chat or that you want to ask live right now? Okay, so there's a couple things popping in the chat, but they're just informational, so good. Well, let's jump into the next little area. The next thing that we said is um, connect with other educators or kind of work with your team a little bit. So I know several of us are attending this conference as, 
you know, we've got some pretty good contingencies going from Riverton and from, I believe, Harriman High School, Mountain Ridge are sending a few folks, right? So I would just say when you start thinking about some of the sessions you want to go to, it's it's really a nice place to kind of set a time, you know, and let your let your peers know what sessions you're going to um, so that so that you can kind of divide and conquer a little bit. Sometimes it's nice to collaborate and go with someone to a session, but your team can also find uh, a, a, some nice time to divide and conquer to learn about several things at the same time. Katie is asking a question. Do we do we plan? Do we need to plan any time for the district where the district's planning to do things together? Do you know we had talked about seeing if people might be interested in going out to dinner or to lunch on one of the days. The only problem is I think we've got about 40 people going so we would be taking over someplace and I don't know that we're uh, we have we have the reservation to be able to do that right now but um if you're interested in trying to connect I'll shoot out an email of a couple of options of things that we potentially might try and do but uh if the if people from the district are interested in trying to connect with each other I think what you'll find is there'll be a lot of opportunity to bump into people um, while you're just kind of in the in the convention center itself. So that's kind of nice. But um, one tool that we're going to be using, uh, Kira kind of runs our um, Jordan Digital Teaching and Learning Twitter handle. If you are a Twitter user, you're more than welcome to follow her. Kira, do you mind putting in the Twitter handle for Jordan just so that people who want to follow us, that'd probably be the best way to communicate with our team, just if you have questions, because we'll be we'll be keeping track of it regularly. So if you're not on Twitter, this might be a, a nice excuse to get a Twitter account. If you are on Twitter, a good chance to follow us at Jordan, um, the Jordan Digital Teaching and Learning team. So Kira will put that in the chat for you, just so that you can you can follow us there. Thanks, Kara. So that's that's our Jordan Twitter handle, and like I say, we'll be checking in on that frequently throughout the conference plus we'll be tweeting out some of our ideas as we go through the conference as well Kara has actually been doing something for the last two weeks um do you mind Kara, sharing what you've been doing with the twitter handle to get people ready for isti yes so isti has several different standards for different groups of people and how to use technology so there's standards for students standards for teachers, um, standards for educational leaders, and then standards for coaches. And so what we did is uh, throughout the month of June, we took a week for each set of standards and found resources. Um, we, we're calling it the countdown to ISTE. Um, so each week is focused on a specific set of standards um, for each group. So like week one, we focused on um, standards for students and how like a conference like ISTE can help these students like achieve some of these standards, like being a collaborator, being a um, involved learner. And there's actually a couple of sessions that like have student presenters, which is a really cool opportunity to hear students talk about their learning with technology. And it's a great like jumping point for you if you're like, oh, I want my students to do something like this. Um, we have our ISTE affiliate in Utah, the USET conference every March. And so if you want to kind of recreate that experience, that might be an, an awesome opportunity is bringing your students to the USET conference and having them present something that they've learned in your class. Um, and then week two is uh, the standards for teachers. And we did a lot of like conference tips and, and what teachers can get out of the conference. Um, educational leaders was week three and then coaches will be week four. So if you check out that Twitter account, you'll see resources every day, as well as during the conference, we'll be live tweeting some of our big takeaways and lessons and ideas that we have from our various sessions that the team members are going to attend. Thanks for sharing that, Kara. And, and like we said, so if you want a chance to connect with us and uh, share ideas with us, that Twitter handle at DTL underscore JSD is probably the fastest way to reach out to us and we'll make sure that we connect with you. Um, just the other couple points that we listed here, you know, I mentioned this a moment ago, but you really do kind of have to plan to take breaks at the conference and plan like going out to lunch or to dinner with others. Um, a lot of restaurants in that area are near the convention center. So it's pretty convenient to get around. If you've never been to New Orleans before, there's also a really nice trolley system where you can ride the trolley to get around the downtown area. 
So it's probably the cheapest way to get around downtown. Depending on where your hotel is at as well, ISTE typically has a shuttle bus that will take you from your hotel to the convention center. So those are some of your options as far as getting getting out and about, but kind of plan your plan your day so that you can make sure you take your, your breaks and get your lunch and dinner. Um, because we've just mentioned the Twitter handle, um, we really are encouraging you, if you don't use social media a ton, this is a great place to use social media. Um, a lot of times you'll find that the sessions are actually almost more entertaining or more engaging when you're following the back channel on Twitter while you're in the session. So typically there'll be a little hashtag that they'll encourage you to use. And a lot of people will be sharing their thoughts and ideas and insights about specific sessions while you're in that session. So you can actually learn from the crowd while you're learning from the presenter. So if you haven't ever used that before, boy, great option for you. And honestly, it's a great way to connect with other educators. You know, almost every session you go to, the presenter will be sharing their social media credentials, whether it's Instagram or like we say, Twitter or some of these others. Um, it's a great place to connect with somebody because as soon as the session ends, a lot of times the presenters get mobbed, right? With people that want to ask them questions or do different things. But most of these people are very willing to respond to a tweet or an email that uh, that you want to connect with them and find out a little bit more about either the topic or ask questions or whatnot. So if you haven't done that before, I highly encourage you to do that. Um, number four, we put, you know, partly why I'm sure every one of us is being sent is for us to provide some professional learning when we come back to our building. So make sure you use some of the note taking apps to take some notes for yourself. Um, some of the ones that are easy to use if you haven't used them before. Uh, we're big fans of Google Keep around our office, but a lot of people really like um, Evernote as a tool on your iPad or on your phone. Um, Notability is another big one that a lot of people like to use in our district, or even just creating a Google Doc and sharing it. Um, as the conference kind of wraps, we'll provide a couple of links out to the group if you want to share any of the things that you collected into a shared Google Drive or into a shared Google document so that we can learn from each other. But I think those are some great ways and some great ideas to make sure that you kind of share resources with one another. Um, the last thing that we wanted to talk about today is that concept of enjoying New Orleans. And I'm going to turn it over to Kira. She has created a little Wakelet board. If you don't know Wakelet, it's a really nice curation tool um, where you can share resources. I'm going to turn it over to you, Kara, to talk, and I'll just kind of run the controls for a minute. Perfect. Okay, so when I found out that ISTE was going to be in New Orleans, I was super excited because um, I went to New Orleans a couple of years ago um, just for spring break randomly. I was like, oh, we should totally check this out. So um, that was in, when, in March, so it was not quite as hot or humid as it's going to be in late June, um, but there's still lots of fun things to be found. Um, in New Orleans. So on this wakelet, uh, Jared's put the link in the chat. I've organized it into three separate sections, things to do, things to eat, and things to see. Obviously the to do and the to see parts are kind of similar, um, but it made sense in my brain. So um, under the to do section, uh, there's like a couple of locations in New Orleans that you want to be aware of. Obviously the French Quarter is super touristy. That's where um, a lot of things are. So these locations specifically in the French Quarter, I've marked like when they're open, how far away from the conference center they are um, and like how much they cost. So um, ghost tours are really popular. There's a really highly rated one that I linked there. Um, I've also linked some activities to do that are more closer to the conference center. Um, and this was a question that was in the chat. The World War II Museum is really close to the conference center. Um, and you don't need to do the conference session to go to the museum. Um, those sessions, those pre-registered sessions fill up really fast. And I don't want you to feel like you can't go see these things just because you're not doing them as part of the official conference experience. Um, when you have a break or if you want to include it in your schedule, you can go visit the museum and go buy a ticket and go through it on yourself. The World War II Museum is awesome. Um, I went last time and it was very impressive. Um, Fulton Street 
is an open air mall that's relatively close to the conference center. So if you don't want to go all the way over to the French Quarter, which is about a mile and a half away from the conference center, Fulton Street could be a cool place to go shopping and get some stuff. There's also a shopping area called the Riverwalk that's like right next to the conference center that has tons of shops available for you too. Um, then my favorite section is the to eat section. New Orleans has great food. So we encourage you to um, explore the local cuisine. Um, the food section is organized a um, little more bougie area. So if you want to like go out and like spend uh, a nice meal, there's some nicer options. And then there's also like highly rated cheap eats on this list. Um, I did my homework and I asked people who lived in New Orleans for recommendations. One of them was to get a po' boy or a mofalada. Those are sandwiches, but they're like New Orleans sandwiches. Um, and you can get them anywhere, but that's what you would ask for is, is a po' boy. Um, but these restaurants, they're close to the, the conference center. They come highly rated. There's the Cafe du Monde. There's a location in the Riverwalk, which is pretty close. There's obviously like the famous location that's in the French Quarter as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of highly rated eats there if you are interested. Um, and then the 2C section, these are more like historical sites or things to kind of be aware of. Um, if you're there Saturday night and you're a sports fan, New Orleans has like a semi-pro soccer team called the Jesters. They have a game there. Um, it's at the stadium, which is by the city park, which is a ways from the conference center. But if you're like, I want to go see something, that could be a fun option. And it's like 10 bucks to go see a sporting event. Um, the Museum of Art, also in the city park, which is by the stadium. So it is a bit of a drive. Um, it is fantastic. Um, but you can get there by trolley. So if you want to kind of experience New Orleans with the trolley, you could head over to the art museum. Um, <laughs> so one of the universities in the city is doing as you like it to play if you want to catch some Shakespeare while you're there. Um, so yeah, just a fun list of things to do to see and to eat while you're in New Orleans. In the big easy. So anyone have specific questions for Kira, our concierge on our tour of New Orleans? <clears throat> we appreciate you doing that work though, Kira. That's gonna be fun to see some of those different things. Um, yeah, if you've never been to New Orleans before, obviously the Cajun culture is really popular and a lot to do with ghosts and voodoo and stuff like that. So kind of some fun areas to go hang out in as, we, as you go around there as well. So um, that's mostly what we had prepared. I'm just kind of curious if we wanna turn it open, if you wanna turn on your mics and do some Q and A, we're happy to answer any questions that we can. Honestly, we're just so excited that you guys are all going with <clears throat> with us to ISTE this year. We had a huge turnout at USET this year as far as our local uh, conference, like Kira mentioned. And it's nice just to see the kind of the um, momentum carrying forward to ISTE this year. If you've never been before, I think you'll really enjoy this conference and a great opportunity to learn a, a lot of new things. So any questions that anybody specifically has that we can help you out with? All right, I'm going to turn off my share screen. Well, <clears throat> if there aren't any questions, uh, just just know that you can always reach out specifically to me if you need if you need help with any of this. Like I say, I've probably been going to this conference as long as anybody in the district. So I'll put my email in the chat just if you need it. Um, but we hope that uh, we bump into you a little bit. <clears throat> Casey's asking, is there a, maybe a G chat we could put together for us to connect? Uh, great suggestion. Yeah, let me see if I can create a little um, option for something like that. So, but yeah, if people are interested in getting together a group chat through the Google chat in your Gmail might be a nice, easy way to connect with some of the other folks. So I think I have a list of everybody that's going, um, at least most of the people are going. So let me see if I can invite you to something like that. But Good suggestion, Casey. All right. Well, I promised you it would be about half an hour and we're there. So I've got that recording. And yeah, I, I will send it out to the, the email list that I had for everybody. So um, share that with the people that maybe I missed or other people that are planning on going to the conference. But 
we are excited. We hope to see you next week in New Orleans somewhere. Thanks, everybody. Hey, Jared. Yeah. So uh, it's a huge list of, of sessions yeah. for ISTE. And uh, I just wonder, as someone that's gone to a lot of them, are there any sessions that you can just recommend? Um, this is my first time going to ISTE, and I'm not looking for anything in particular. I'm, a, I'm an administrator, so I guess I kind of am going to it thinking more on the technology leadership side of things. But I'm also not opposed to, you know, getting down and dirty, just learning new apps and, and tools and tricks and stuff like that. So is there anything that you can recommend just going into a big conference like this? Yeah, a couple of things that I would say. Um, and unfortunately, we're, we're a little late for some of this, but it's still okay. They have sessions that are called, um, they used to be called a bring your own device session. So they're meant to be more hands on. So I think they're now called interactive sessions. Um, some of those are ticketed, meaning that they're asking you to register in advance before you can go. Um, if those sessions are full, but you see a topic that you're really interested in, like it's probably, you know, it's not something that you're casual about, but it's something you'd really like to play around with. They will allow you to go and get in line, usually about half an hour before the session starts. And there's standby for people that don't obviously show up. So. That's a really good idea if you if there's a specific topic you really want to catch would be um, those interactive ones, especially that you you might have to go a little bit early and wait in the standby line to get into something like that, but. Um, I always do at least a couple of those um, I also always try and go to at least a few of those. Um, like the TED talk style ones if you've never seen those really good presentations covering a lot of different areas. I think they're, they'd probably be a little bit more inspirational than educational, right? But I'm just a big fan of that for some of us right now at this time of the year, just to fire you up and get your batteries charged up a little bit. They have some specific um, like uh, featured speakers as well each day. Usually they have those on the second day of the conference in the morning. But they bring in some just really great speakers. They usually have like the Secretary of Education will come and speak at this. They'll usually have, um, you know, some entertainers and some different things like that. So those are ones that are a little bit of a crowd to get into, but totally worth it if you've never seen some of those speakers. Like, I mean, this was the conference that introduced me to Malcolm Gladwell, right? And once I saw him at the conference, I was like, oh, man, I got to start reading his stuff. Um, and it's, it's some of those kind of, you know, at the time they were a little lesser known, but they really do try and reach out and get some of those kind of folks. So those are those are great would, sessions to attend. Yeah, I Kara. would also recommend on the program search, you can filter it out by session type, like who's the audience. And they have sessions specifically geared towards admin and teacher leadership. Um, so you can click on that and it will show you like those specific sessions, especially where you are an admin, that might be nice to kind of look over to see what they have available. Um, because that will be, you will be the key audience for those sessions. Yeah. One other little tip that uh, Deanna Taylor gave out. Sometimes you, you've got two sessions that are kind of competing with each other. And so she mentioned that um, if you're near one of them and it's, um, it's maybe you won't be able to find a seat a lot of times they'll just have their contact information on the slide as you go into the room and you can just take a picture of that so you can reach out to them later and maybe try and connect that way as well or get the access to their slides so that's another little tip that i think is really useful but truthfully once you get there i think you'll start to get a feel for some of what you're looking for i typically try and avoid vendor sessions in conference presentation rooms like I like if I want to see the vendors, I want to go to the vendor hall to see them. I usually don't like to go to sessions where it's you think it's just about a tool and it ends up being a sales pitch. I kind of those kind of drive me bananas, to be honest with you. So I try and avoid those if I see that it's being sponsored by a vendor. If a teacher's doing a session on it, though, I love those because I want to hear what the teacher has to say about why that tool is so effective for their classroom.
Great, thank you. No, great question, Glenn, thanks. Anybody else? Yeah, um, Jared, I'm curious about the COVID um, thing. I was just reading through something that they just sent, ISTE did. Before we get our badges, we have to have a test, a COVID test. Is that kind of what so it's explaining? I oh. haven't seen that yet. The last thing that I saw was that I think they're using the Clear app where you can yeah. actually just put in your your information. So if you've got the boosters and everything that you can just show that on your own app electronically and it should, should and it qualify should. you. Okay. That's that's what I've used at other kind of larger events is just that clear app. But Colby, do you know about that? You're nodding, I see. Yeah, I, I got the same information. Um, so yeah, that's what it says. You either have to have proof of vaccination and you can use the clear app is like the way that they're recommending to speed it up um, or a negative test that was taken no earlier than Saturday, June 25th. Yeah. But okay. I did notice as far as COVID goes, um, just like travel wise, I don't think there are any restrictions flight wise with even masks anymore. I think masks are all voluntary on planes if you haven't flown lately. So yeah. Yeah, I haven't checked to see what the numbers are like in Louisiana right now. I'm hoping we don't all come back with it. So there you go. Thanks on that. No, thanks, Kevin. Okay, well, I will stop our recording and I will send this out to you all. And if you want to forward this on to other folks, let's do it. But we'll hopefully bump into each other there. <laughs>